Hi again, welcome to another video, and today we're back on the VW Polo, and I hope to have it running good today. I got it a little bit better, but it still had a problem. I'm pretty sure I knew what the problem was. I'm probably back in here, because I'm pretty sure I found the problem. I did record it, and what it's doing, so I'll show you that now. And as you could see, when I was spraying the carb spray underneath the air filter housing, it was revving up. That flange, I think, is letting air in, and that's causing the running issue. So I'm gonna get one of them ordered and get that fitted on, and then I think we may have cracked this. And I have a new part here. It's a new carburetor flange that fits between the carburetor and the inlet manifold. So, Hopefully that will fix it. My old one didn't look that bad, but I just think age has uh, made it so it's not sealing as it should be. Anyway, I'm gonna get you set up and we'll get this old flange off. I haven't got disconnect much to do that. And I did show that in the first video, but I'll film it, but I'll probably just speed it through so you can see me get it off quick and then we'll fit the new one. And then hopefully everything is all good. So to get the old flange off, I've got to take the air filter off and then I've got to take the two bolts out of the carburetor and then that will come away from the flange. But the flange is held onto the manifold with four nuts underneath. So I've got to get my hand right underneath the manifold to get them four nuts off. I did show that when I was taking the carburetor off originally, but I did put it all back on because I thought the flange was okay, but I don't think it is. So um, yeah, I'll just work my way through it and you can just watch along. So I've got the last nut off. So that's the four of them off now. Um, it took me about five, five minutes really, because um, I had had it off before and I did put WD-40 on them before I put them back on, so that did help. Uh, they can be a bit of a pain to get them nuts off from underneath, but if you can get your hand under there and you persevere, it's not that bad. So now I'm gonna get a carburetor out of the way the best I can and then pull the old flange out. I do need to take the throttle cable out of a little piece that holds it in place because that comes off with the flange like that and then i should be able to just lift it out of the way and this should just lift out i'm not sure how much you can see i'll bring you around you should be able to see better from this angle so now all i have to do is lift that out of the way and lift that up and then it's out So there's the old one. We'll take it over to the new one and compare them. So where I think the problem was is that piece there. You can see that round there, like a ring round there. That does protrude out of there to get the seal. On the old one, it's almost worn all the way down. There, I think that was a problem. Also on the top, much the same. Look on the new one. There is that piece around there that just helps seal it. And I think that that had worn on there. Just for age, I think uh, the rest of it is in decent condition and it could well be the original one. I think I looked before and it has got the VW Audi logo on it. So it's a genuine one. So I doubt it's ever been changed. Um, I've got to put that part off of the old one onto the new one. So I'll do that and then we'll get the new one fitted. So what I'm gonna do now is put the flange back in. I'll show you me doing that. I have cleaned around where it seals on the manifold and I did on the carburetor when I cleaned the carburetor. So that should be good, it should seal good. So I'll put the flange in right now.
think I've just about got it now. Yep. And now I can put the car back on top. And I'll do that off camera because it's just a matter now of me doing the four nuts up underneath the manifold to hold the flange on and then the two bolts that hold the carburetor on. So when I've done them, I'll be back with you and then we'll get the air filter cover back on. So I've got the nuts done up now underneath the manifold to hold the flange on. I've done the two carb bolts as well, shredded my arm, getting your hand right under there to try and tighten up them nuts is quite difficult. Some people say it's easier from underneath the car, but I haven't got it jacked up and I managed to do it from in there. So yeah, it's all done now. So I'm gonna put the air filter back on now. So I have one vacuum line to connect. So I'll just push that on. So that's on. There is a bigger rubber pipe that goes on underneath as well. So I'll get that one on. There it is. You can't see much, but it's obvious where, where it is and where it goes. So that should be all I need to do to connect all that. I'm just gonna put them clips around there. It'll be easier to get the top bit on. Then it's just connect it on there. The three nuts, I'll get them done. So I've got the three nuts here, I'll just get them back on. So now the new flange has been fitted, everything's back on, I can go for start up and we'll see how it runs then. So I'll do that now. So now that new flange has been fitted and everything's back together, I'm gonna go for start up. So let's see if I fix this. over nicely but at the moment the choke is still on so if we when the choke goes off that's when I know whether I fixed it or not no uh, we're gonna have to see why it did that so let's start it again Might have to give it a rev to clear it. We'll see what happens now. Give it a bit of a clear out. Choke. I don't like these auto chokes, I never did. See, the choke is still shut at the moment. So we're not going to know until that choke's off. I'm back on the polo again. Um, last time I worked on this, I fitted the new flange on it. The new carburetor flange that fits between the manifold and the carburetor. And I did start it up after that, and I did a few adjustments and it seemed to be running okay. Um, I'm not sure I filmed that, I don't think I did. Um, but then all of a sudden it stopped and wouldn't start. 
I looked at the fuel gauge and it looked like it was out of fuel. So I went and got some fuel, put it back in, and I've tried to start it and start it. Put some carb cleaner in the carb to try and start it, to draw it up. It fires, but then it just doesn't pull any up into the fuel one. So I thought something else for it, a new fuel pump. So hopefully that'll fix it. I'm just wondering, because the car's been sitting around for so long, has the pump just given up? So there's two volts to undo. I'll do that one now. I'll do the other one off camera. It's really tight. Cool. That was extremely tight. I'll take that one out. There's not much to taking it off. There's one bolt here, one bolt there, and a couple of pipes, that's all. And then hopefully it will draw up fuel again because this um, running problem on this Polo has become a little bit of a saga. I'm just replacing bits, hopefully in the end, I'll fix the problem. But I can't think what else it will be. If it's not drawing up the fuel, you think fuel pump. So, or a filter block, but the filter looks good. So, um, we'll see when we've got this new pump on it. I'm determined to sort everything out on this to make it um, as reliable as it can possibly be. I'll replace quite a lot of bits on this car. So, I've got that bolt out. I'm going to get the one behind there out. It's a bit trickier, that one. So, I'll do that off camera. So I've nearly got the second bolt out and that was incredibly tight as well. It was so tight and it's a difficult position to get in there. Uh, but I've disconnected that pipe off the bottom because I needed to, to get to that bolt. And I can just disconnect that there like so. And then that bolt, when it's out, should release everything. I don't wanna drop my Allen bit. Then that should pull it out. Is there something cable tied to that? So no, there's a little bracket. Yep, got that. And we've got that. So we'll just take it over to the table and compare it with the new one, and then we'll get the new one fitted. So here's the old fuel pump, and this is the uh, new one. It was 28 pound delivered. So I'll just undo the package. Should be neater really, in case it has to go back, in case it's wrong, but I think there's only two types. Um, some have got an angled piece that connects to that engine and some have got it flat. And I need the flat one. And we have a new O-ring in there as well. Does it look the same? Yeah, that'll fit. It's slightly different there. There's a bit of, of cast in there. It's not on there, but I don't think that's gonna make any difference. It looks the same length. Uh, that's angled a little bit different. But I don't think that's going to make any difference. So I'm going to get this bolted on. I don't really need to show you that because all I've got to do is just put the new O-ring in there and bolt it on with them two bolts. Then I'll be back with you when it's all connected up and we'll see if the car will start. So now the new fuel pump is fitted. I haven't put the air filter back on yet, but we're just going to see whether it pumps fuel up into the filter. I've got some carb spray I might put in there to help draw it up, but... We'll see if it does it off its own steam to begin with. So just pump the throttle or and um, turn it over. broken so yep that's another little job done um, it's on choke at the moment so we'll tick over okay on choke uh, but we'll let it warm up and see what it kicks over like uh, when the choke goes off
So, I think I've just about got it right. It doesn't sound great because that exhaust is leaking still. That is my next job to sort out that exhaust so it doesn't leak. I'm not 100% sure about the vacuum pipes. I've just changed a couple over and run it up both ways. I'm not sure if one way is better than the other or not. It's, um, yeah, going to be a bit of trial and error. But I've still got a screwdriver in there because there's an adjustment screw in there and there's one in there. But I don't think I can do too much more to it until I've sorted that exhaust leak out because that is making it sound like it's running lumpy. And actually before it was running lumpy. I couldn't understand. It kept stalling um, and it was running lumpy. When I put that on, the new fuel pump, I've got to put the plug lead back on so yeah schoolboy error there um but um yeah it's not running too bad at all i have got to sort out the clips the fuel clips because they're not great but we are a lot lot nearer now and i'm not gonna go any further with this trying to make it run any better until i've done that exhaust and i will purchase the pipe that fits from there to there like a concertina type pipe and i will get that as well and it could do with new plugs probably as well and possibly new leads and distributor um cap as well so um yeah there's lots i'll be doing to this going forward but i just wanted it to tick over and run reasonable and it is ticking over now and the choke's all off and the auto choke's all off and everything so it's 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 all right it's a big improvement to how it was when i got it it's just um one of them things i've got to just sort of a maybe adjust a little bit as I go along and just um, see if I can just get it spot on. Um, but I'm fairly happy with it. Uh, and I can't tell actually how good it's going to be until the exhaust is done. So yeah, I'm quite happy with this now. It's not running too bad at all. So I'm um, gonna leave the video here. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I finally got there, I think now, uh, with this engine, it's running, yeah, pretty good. So thanks for watching and I'll be along with another video again soon. So bye for now.